Okay. So now we're at 12 with the new generation. We are on Undertaker v. Diesel. Interesting. So let's see. Now what's their beef with each other? So at Royal Rumble 96, Undertaker competed against Bret Hart for the championship. As the Phenom prepared to end the match with a tombstone, he was attacked by Diesel, who thought that he deserved the title shot. Okay. It was announced at WrestleMania 12, Undertaker and Diesel would face off in a battle of the most dominant big men. With the match approaching, the mind games began as the Phenom proceeded to torment Big Daddy Cool. Eventually, psychological warfare peaked as Undertaker positioned a coffin at ringside. Diesel destroyed the casket only to discover a life-sized replica of himself within. Whoa. It's, like a, it's a voodoo diesel. Yes. I always liked that, though. But the, the Undertaker, Undertaker would always, like, progressively thing. do all, like, creepy shit to his yeah. opponents as, as the match got closer. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, did you see WrestleMania 30? Uh, no. That's the one the where, the, where the streak was broken by up and co by that up-and-coming, young up-and-coming star, Brock Lesnar. Yes. Mm. Um... <laughs> Okay, this is a side tangent, but you've seen those um, those photos where somebody's like holding, like those celebrities are holding a, a piece of paper that says hashtag bring back our girls? Yeah, okay, sure. Um, <laughs> somebody photoshopped one with Michelle Obama mm -hmm. replacing the hashtag bring back our girls with hashtag my client, uh, Paul Heyman's client Brock Lesnar defeated the Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania 30. <laughs> And like, it's kind of a long hashtag. It, well, that's the thing that Bro um, Paul Heyman keeps saying. Like every time he gets a microphone, he screams that, and he gets the cheapest heat in the My world. My <laughs> Everybody just hates him for it, and they're just like, "Boo, boo, you fucking suck." All right. Oh man, the sound's doing something weird. Uh -oh. It's clipping where I assume there's supposed to be gongs and lightning. Oh, okay. Oh. Because uh, it's removed the uh, theme. I, I understand why it would remove the gongs. Why would it remove the lightning? I don't know. Now, had he started that whole Ministry of Darkness thing at this point yet, or is that still yes. in, in the future? Oh, uh, no, yet? No, I don't think so. I think that's halfway between New Generation and the Attitude Era, because I'm pretty sure he dropped um, the Ministry of Darkness. So what's funny is, what's interesting to note is the Ministry of Darkness start came up because um, Mark, Mark Call Calloway mm -hmm. um, wanted to be done with the Dead Man gimmick. Oh, really? Yeah, he said he was kind of done with being a zombie, done with the demonic stuff. Okay. As much as he enjoyed it and wanted to perform for the fans, for the fans, he didn't want to do something that made him seem super evil. Okay. Especially because his kids started to grow up and get into wrestling. Oh, okay, so he didn't demonic. want to be such a such a sinister figure. Okay. Yeah, which is uh, the the biker taker gimmick was actually his idea. Oh, okay. He's, he's a very big enthusiast of oh, motorcycles, motorcycles no, in okay, real life. Yeah. And so he wanted to do that. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't as well received as his dead man gimmick. But okay, so if he wanted to be less sinister and evil, how did that lead to the Ministry of Darkness angle? Well, he wanted to go out with a go out on the character with a bang. Oh, <laughs> with the whole human sacrifice of Stephanie McMahon and all that. Yes. On and the so, sim, like, on he, the under. He remember, it up and then, what's that? Oh, well, he, he, the idea was to ramp it up, and then he was to leave and then return as the biker taker. Okay. Remember, it was on a symbol. Don't never ever call that thing that Stephanie McMahon was on a cross. It was a symbol. It was a T-shaped sacrificial <laughs> symbol. <laughs> they were very careful about that. It was like, it's like an NES game in the 80s. <laughs> well, there had, yeah. been, there had been this thing in uh, ECW where... I think it involved Sandman and Raven, and one actually did, like, crucify the other. And it didn't go over that well. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine it would. 
then again, there was a lot of things you told me. Uh, what was that you told me about? Um, seven was that with ECW? Oh, or is that no? That was WCW. Where, oh, WCW. Where, yeah, where yeah. Turner broadcast standards and practices made them drop the angle because it seemed too much like a pedophile. <laughs> God, I love and they that. and they had a and they they had a point. I have to say. For a little for a little background, folks, just look up like seven WCW on YouTube and or seven Dustin Rhodes on YouTube. It's one of the most disturbing wrestling vignettes or whatever the hell it is I've ever seen. It's I don't really know what they were going for. I mean if they were trying to be disturbing and weird, I guess they succeeded, but N Nick was deeply scarred by it the first time I showed it. Oh god. Well to be fair, we were we were just talking on the internet and it was like like one in the morning or something and Join me, Nick. Live forever in bliss. I you have to see I can't really do it justice. You have to see it to experience it. <laughs> we have to experience it to understand it, I should say. It was too much too much, John. Yeah. But yeah, that, they were trying to do some like super evil, scary, supernatural gimmick and It involved yeah, Dustin Rhodes in this like hat and like like all this white makeup and this weird stuff and he's like outside this little kid's bedroom window. Was it a makeup? It looked like a mask. Maybe. I don't know. I think it was makeup. It looked a lot like a Michael Myers mask. You could be right. I don't know. And he's like, yeah, he's like talking outside this kid's little kid's room in this distorted electronic voice. It's... Join me and live for Yeah, him. yeah, and he's like trying to like entice the child out of the... So you can kind of understand why Turner Broadcasting was like, okay, we don't want this on our station. So do you know, like, around when that was with WCW? Was that, like, during the Monday Night Wars? I think it might have been. I'm okay. not sure precisely when. Because I find that interesting. Um, WW, WWF at the time uh, got a similar cease and desist warning about um, Degeneration X. What, like from, their, from, like, USA Network or something? From USA Network and Sky Sports... And all the uh, carriers okay, that right. broadcast. What the hell? Something going on weird with the animation there. Um, saying like, "Hey, degener the the Degeneration X stable is doing some shit that uh, I, that the companies are not comfortable with." Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they were pretty. Uh, they did a lot of like sort of crude, offensive stuff. Yeah. Wasn't their catchphrase "suck it" at one point? Yeah, the, that was their catchphrase for forever. Oh, okay. So here's the pin combo. Yes. Oh. Tombstone. Hands. There's the pose. Oh, oh what no! the fuck? Fuck you. Never before has there been a fucking rope break. <laughs> this is the first one I recall, yeah. God damn it. Make him suffer for it. Stomps, stomps, stomps. <laughs> okay, no, okay, yeah, uh... Seven was, uh, WCW was, uh, 1999. Yeah, okay, that would have been about the era of the Monday Night Wars. Yeah. What was WCW's, um, Monday Night program called? Uh, was it Nitro? That was Nitro, yeah. Okay. And then they had Thunder on, I think, Thursday night. Man, it's so weird. Like, when you really think about it, like, I know professional wrestling is not a specific, its own business, mm -hmm. but WWE kind of has a monopoly on the business. Well, they're certainly pretty... Well, they're, they're very certainly very dominant. I mean, TNA well, is a very distant second. And, an incredibly distant second. And then there's the very like, small... Like, performance-wise, I get that um, Ring of Honor, New Japan Pro, and all those other um, ones still exist. Mm -hmm. But, like... Um, WWE pretty much broadcasts every single night. There's Raw. Uh, Tuesday is um, when they do the live broadcast of main event, which they do on the network. Okay. And uh, Wednesday is the replay of it. Thursday is NXT. Friday is SmackDown. And Saturday has Saturday Morning Slam. There we go. Finally. I know. 
And this then has Sunday to be difficult is when to all their pay per views there. All right. Uh, you can kind of tell that we're not. <laughs> we're not super interested in, in d in the wrestling stylings of it Diesel when. I, we kind of forgot that there was a match involving him going on. This is it. 